Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's the J Gemini. Tonight I wanted to bring you a video of something that I see all the time, and of course I'm super passionate about witches watches, but more specific bracelets on watches. Now I'm sure we've all seen it. Somebody ends up having a watch, they end up buying it, and it's hanging off their wrist here. And that's because bracelets are not always the easiest thing to size. A lot of bracelets come in a lot of different methods to be able to size them. And tonight, we're actually going to take a look at one of the more popular bracelets that probably a lot of people are going to come across that aren't the aftermarket bracelet and aren't the sort of high-end. And that is the pinned bracelet. Now, let me get this right out of the way. These bracelets are very nice and can be very high quality as the one you see here on this Seiko Turtle. But um, they can be a little bit more hard to size. So today, I hope I'm gonna end up going and showing you that. Now, just as easy, you could also make a decision to just go with something like a strap. But to me, although, you know, I love, you know, swapping it up, putting straps sometimes, putting, you know, bracelets on other times, just how I'm feeling. To me, that's kind of like taking a, you know, V12 Lamborghini or, you know, V8 Ferrari and LS swapping it with a turbo or, you know, a turbo K24 Honda motor. Like, yes, in certain parts that might be fun, but there's an experience to be had with a bracelet. Usually it's made specifically towards that design, overall towards that watch. So today, we want you to have the full experience and be able to enjoy it all. So let's try and jump right in. Now, what I'm actually gonna do, by the way, I picked this kit up on Amazon and I got it on a Prime Day sale for like six or eight dollars. But even at like the $22 that they charge for it, um, it comes with so many great things. Today we're actually gonna be using this sizing bracelet going to be using this driver hammer and then we're going to be using one of these um, inside of here we're actually going to be using a little driver post to work this side this style of um, bracelet now the other style is right here this is a strap code aftermarket bracelet strap code is amazing I highly recommend them from how long I've had this how nice it still looks after all this time. Um, as you can see, this is a different type of bracelet. This is a screw-in bracelet. So you just take a little screwdriver, size it through. Once it threads through, you, you know just sort of tighten it up, and it's basically good to go forever. What we'll be doing with today, I'm going to keep this here actually for uh, later, is like I mentioned, the pen style. So as you can see, both sides, there are no screws. What, and the way that it actually works is that as you, you look, there are these little arrows. Let's try and focus this in. Yeah. So as you can see, there are these little arrows telling us what direction we need to drive the pin out of. And we have to be mindful that when we put it back in, we put it in opposite. So try and get that back in to where just about where it was that should be fine okay so the reason I actually brought up two watches is actually the first step I believe that it will be easier if you already have a size bracelet to use that as a reference point to get a pretty exact sizing of what you need your bracelet to be instead of taking all this extra time removing adding removing adding removing and it just becoming an all over uh, all over fun um not fun endeavor sorry about that it's hard for me to say geez so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take off the clasp and just sort of remember where you had it of the watch that you're dealing with so this is the micro adjustment on the cla clasp so you can get a better fit after you get your links dialed in so that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm taking out, and you can see the tolerances are so tight, I can't even go past this. You have to pop both sides out. How good the strap code is. Okay. 
So luckily with these tools, this doesn't have to be an awkward like six hour video, hopefully. So as we can see, we get an idea of how many links each side ends up using, not including this and not including these, which are like hold placeholders. We basically have five links, four links. But the thing is, is that the main goal with the bracelet, and the reason why there's five links over here, is once it's bolted into the three part position, it actually ends up sitting in the middle of the wrist. And I should have showed you this actually up front. I haven't said, and you remember to say that, but then, you know, you just get going, ripping and roaring, ready to go, and uh, you forget things sometimes. Not perfect, not by the slightest, but we'll go ahead and pop that back in. It shouldn't be too hard to pop back out and show you guys what I was talking about. Okay, there, so. Okay, geez, so what I was wanting to show you is our main goal whenever you're adjusting your bracelet is to have it where it sits square in the middle, like so, of your wrist. So, that's your end goal. Unless you like it some other way, which I don't know why anyone would. So I would say that's your sort of main rule of thumb. All right, so there's one side out. Reslotted itself, okay. That's fine. There we go. Okay. So, bracelet is back off. Like I said, having the right tools really helps. So, what our main goal is now is to do somewhat of the same. Basically, what we want to do is take this bracelet completely off the watch so the watch has no um, ability to be scratched. That's why, hint, we, hence, we have this microfiber here now it looks like on the turtle there's no way to access it from the back they have sawed in links which is nice but it's just straight through this hole so this will make things a little easier but also we have to be a little bit more careful to make sure we are not scratching anything on the beautiful turtle so we're going to use this thin i'm going to just grab the watch here and the easiest way to take off a bracelet actually to apply downward pressure towards the bracelet, attack it from one side, slowly and respectfully. So as you can see, that's sort of popped halfway out, but if the tolerances are good on the watch that you have, that bracelet should not allow you to completely take the pin off from one side. So then that's where you have to do the same constant pressure. Come in really respectfully carefully is what I'm trying to say and as you can see now just softly releases nothing gets hurt scratched nothing a little bit of water on there I baptized it no I uh, ran it under the faucet because uh, out of the um, box out of the box it uh, had a little bit of like manufacturing black goop so I just wanted to get that off so it didn't scratch anything Again, one side, very careful, and the other, so easy. Okay. Now, I'll let you do that. And let me just get these fat boy. As you can see, that's an ISO certified, <laughs> that's an ISO certified spring dive bar right there, or spring bar, dive spring bar. Uh, everything about the Seiko watches is very tool, very trick, made to really be used for what it's, you know, labeled to do. Okay, tried to dry it off the best I could. So, as you can see, it's a decent bracelet. If you take care of it, nothing's going to bend. They have these reinforcement to give extra tension and things like that. It's got a, you know, dive extension. So honestly, you can use this and you don't have to go for a different style um, bracelet, but you can if you want to. So, okay. So now that we're here, 
we're going to sit this down, we're going to move this to the side, and we're going to focus in just on the bracelet now. So the first thing we're going to try and do is we're going to try to get an idea of what each side is going to look like. So when we repair, um, compare sorry, the links, comparatively, they're almost identical in size to these. So what we can do is somewhat say that following that same amount of bracelets, of uh, links, sorry, in the bracelet, one, two, three, four, okay. So one thing to keep in mind is this is almost like a link itself, right? This curves around your wrist, so when you're wearing it, what we're trying to get at is somewhat like this, right? Maybe like this or right here. So we have to kind of get as best we can an estimation comparative on the um, clasp down here. That as you can see is a little bit of a different size. So we'll just start to get to work. If anything is long, I'll just cut it out. Don't wanna waste all everybody's time, but at the same time, I want to show you guys as much as the process as possible. So we're going to jump right in. This is a sort of non-mooring soft plastic. And what you can do is again, with this thing that we used to remove these spring bars, we're also going to use this to drive out. Now, as you can see, we got these pieces here that uh, these are the removable links, and there's a fourth removable link here too underneath the dive bar extension. Now, it's been a while since I've had a turtle with a dive bar extension, so I believe you just gotta take your finger, pull down, like, yep, that's what it is, and then push forward, and there you go. Extended to be able to move over a suit. But as you can see, that within itself is a um, link, a full-on removable link as well. Now a fourth one has unveiled itself. So I'm thinking, just from its size, so I'm thinking to remove two Then with the dive bar extension, you have one, two, three, four, five, six, six, not including, so if you remove two, you'll have four, technically not including the dive bar. Yeah, so that should be fine. So doing two on the side. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna line up these holes, move as many tools as possible so it's not hitting into anything. And we're going to uh, line up this hole right here and the down position right like this and just sort of roughly align it with these holes down here. Then we're going to end up taking this driver, again, gently putting it in there and then just with a little tiny bit of force. And as you can see, it's sort of got a hollow sound to it. That's where it came out. See? Fully dropped out of place. And so, what you're looking at is you're looking at this. It is a piece that on one side has this sort of lip, a straight bar on the other side, and then inside of the bracelet here, there's actually a... Like, like spring that basically, or a piece of metal that's like this, and once you push this hole in, it widens out and tightens everything up. So you've kind of seen that. I'm gonna just cut, and then I'm gonna come back once, you know, we, we've got the other links off. I just realized I, right before I was getting that other link, this is what I was talking about. So this collar piece, you just can pull them off with your fingers. No, you're supposed to be able to. Here we go, yeah. So this is what I was talking about. This little tiny piece. So all you have wanna do when you're putting this back together, I'll show you in a second. We're just gonna set this aside. 
next to this so we don't lose it and I'll come back. Okay, so I just ended up drawing the second link out, driving it out, and one thing, it actually got stuck, and I was like, gosh, it wouldn't come out. So what I noticed is, is that collar got stuck right on the end and was actually creating a residual force. So what I did is I just pulled it off, set it aside, and then it drove really easily the rest of the way out. But basically, what we're gonna do is kind of a pulse check right now of where we're at. So, if we put the dive class ex extension back on, like so, nice and solid like that, and then we check this. As you can see, we're about in the same ballpark as this bracelet. Yeah, so, respectively, we're just minutely longer. So again, we're just gonna call a spade a spade. I'm gonna drive out this side and then I'll come back for the installation part. Okay, so we're back for this one because one of the links is under that dive clasp. I just simply removed it with a pin right here. So we're gonna pop, we're gonna see how to put that all back together and pop that through. So I removed three links on one side, two links on the other. That's how these bracelets work. One side has a lot more than the other. Um, all you know sort of wristwatches do so the next thing we're going to do is basically do the process but in reverse so the first thing we're going to start out with is we're actually going to start out with the collar here we go there good lord all right so what we're, the way that we're going to actually do this is we're going to start off with this little collar. We're going to line everything up like this. And we basically know that this collar ends up going ahead and going in. That was almost very bad. <laughs> it almost dropped off on the floor. Okay, so the collar ends up going in. I'm gonna like really double think this now, hold on. So if I'm driving it, yeah, okay. So the collar gets stuck first, so that it actually goes in on this side and just drops in like this. So it's loose, as you can see, it falls out. So what you wanna do is you actually wanna take the pin, put your link on, put the pin in with the shouldered side opposite of the arrow because if you're driving against that shoulder you got to think just logically if you're driving against that shoulder it's not going to move it's just going to stay there forever so it has to be the opposite side and then naturally that's why the collar gets stuck on this post first is because that's the first thing it touches so the collar goes on here like so Now, what you want to do is you want to get a flat surface kind of like this, where you can sit the bracelet, and then you want to take the punch, which these have little divots in, so they kind of self-center. You just want to slightly press down, just like that, really easy. And it's almost best to have two punches with this situation. So you can press on one side and press on another. So that just gets it initially started. Let me actually get another one. That way I can push them to against each other. Now what I did this, what you can do that I did before is if you have some larger like tacks that you push into like a pen, uh, like a cork board at work or something and they come to a point, the ones that actually have like a little, they're like a T, you can actually file that down, one of the smaller ones and one of the medium ones, and it's enough that it actually presses against the collar, and the smaller one goes inside of the collar and works the same. So that's sort of a, if you have those tools, you can take them from you know work or you know borrow some or something like that, modify them and actually have cheap tools on the cheap, but, we're gonna try, again, 
The good thing is this doesn't take a whole lot of force. It's more so just, you know, doing a 300 job and making sure nothing gets scratched. That's the hardest part. Yeah, see, like right there, I actually came out of the hole. Definitely don't want to be, you know, doing that a lot. So it's all bouncing act. And actually, speaking of which, I might try this. Yeah. Like this isn't necessarily easy. And this is why some people don't like these type of uh, pins because you, you or these type of uh, cla uh, bracelets, sorry, because you really do have to have like this super concentration to make sure you don't mess up the watch. Okay, so see, I'm just pushing it as far to the side as it's going. So it's pushing against the little collar instead of it pushing against anything else. And now that's basically fully tightened when this isn't having any play at all. It's not moving back and forth at all. And this is, you don't see the collar right on the edge. You know that it's down in there. Give it a little wiggle and a yank and there you go. So I'm gonna try that again just because even now, it's been such a long time since I've done it, it was a learning curve. So again, we're gonna take this and we're gonna end up taking, what side am I on? This really is a situation that is like, who's on first? Okay, this that was that side. So this is this side right here. So again, as you can see, doing that with this on here might just be better, yet again, to actually pop it off. So I'm gonna do that and come back to you. Okay, so as you can see, I put the bracelet and the clasp together on one side, and I've taken off the dive, I've extended the dive extension. This is the link that actually connects him to the dive extension, so I can just be dealing with this instead of a big floppy, floppy bracelet. So again, same um, sort of thought process. The collar was the first thing out. So you actually want the collar to be at the bottom, opposite of the arrow. The, not the collar, the stepped edge. And then you wanna take your little collar piece, this little tiny circular, and drop it in there. Just like so. Again, just using that same process of taking this very carefully, putting it in there, just sort of getting that pressure. It'll naturally center itself because, again, these little edges have a uh, round circular piece. You can see the collar kind of sticking out of there. So, again, to get it started, you can just as easy, you see that, push it on with your nail. So, it's not there is enough tension that it's not going to come out but it is also not enough tension where it, you know it's not impossible to do this now you see i just got it stuck a little so just see i just pulled it on out accidentally so you really got to make sure you're you're hugging that edge of the link instead of going in the middle or that you know annoyance can happen so we're going to run it back try again do like this, and this is why it's so good to have like a microfiber, because you know you're sitting this down multiple times. You know it's better to just be safe than sorry. So again, we're gonna take our nail, push it down just to get it flat, get some traction on there. Then we're going to try again to hug the very edge, push it in maybe at an angle. So it's starting to go in. Now we're just gonna finish it up like this. There, I felt it move, and there we go, it's on. So, let's see what happens if we're close. Hopefully not, or hopefully so, definitely hopefully so, so we don't have to go through all of that again. But the cool thing is, once you do it one time, whether it's with a paperclip, 
or it's with the proper tools, you don't have to do it again. It's very easy with putting that back on. Seiko did a great job. They rounded the tips of these uh, little pin adjusters. So once you pop them out, it's easy to put back in and you're not having to fight it. Okay, so the next thing is attaching it onto the wristwatch. Seeing how we did, so naturally you want it to be on your wrist like this. So when you turn it over, the bottom of the watch is up here. The text facing you, you turn it over, the watch is facing you here. So this is the bottom. So let's move all this so we're not even anywhere close. And you want to keep these, you know, just in case. I don't ever plan to get rid of this, but in case you were to sell your watch, you have all the components that came with it. Okay, and basically we just do the reverse process, right? We take our spring bar, you keep one side out and one side barely flush. You just sort of keep it there with your finger with slight pressure. We insert into the back like so. Just like that. Then you can take your finger or a spring bar and see, this is not necessarily easy when it's the tolerances are tight. Like it's a good thing, you want that, but it's also very room, very little room for error. Okay, there we go. Okay. Now, this little guy popped in on this side. There we go. There we go. Shoof. All right. Let's just sweat. I don't know why it's so humid in this house right now. It's because I washed this darn bracelet. So now we can really get an idea of, are we even in a ballpark or do we just need to stop? And I would definitely say we're just about there. Huh. Yeah, unfortunately, what's going to need to happen, which I'm... Re Can I just... Hold on. I need to swap these, but... But I just figured out, because as you can see what happened there, right? My goal, putting it here, and then flipping it over, it's over there, right? So if I drag it back, then it's over here, no go. But then this is definitely the right, oh, I'm not even on camera. So as you can see, if you drag it back where it's perfectly aligned, then this does come right into the right range of where I am. So that is the right length, it's just the opposite side. So what I'm gonna try to do, Let's just pop this off, pop this off, swap it around, take it off the watch, of course, swap it around, um, and then try it on the other side. Be right back. Hey guys, I'm back. So, I ended up having to adjust the bracelet even more, and, you know, this is a great thing. I'm actually glad that this happened. I mean, not really, but still, I am, because it just kind of ended up showing, like, I've done this before on my old turtle, but that was like three years ago. And even though I have some experience with it, you know, you, you can have these sort of little things happen. So I had to remove one link from one side, add it to the other. And that kind of brings me to an exact, an excellent point is that, again, these bracelets are frustrating. Um, if you have the screw down bracelets, it's a situation that you could just so easily say, you know what, I'll just take a screw out, put this, you gotta line it back up. You gotta do the whole special, you know, magic trick and all that jazz. So, especially when you're dealing with bracelets like this, the best advice I can give, and I'm glad that, like I said, this did happen, is just take your time and be patient, right? Like, 
you don't have to be, uh, you know, what, it's not working, I'm going to force it, because then that's when something breaks. I mean, I had that sort of happen right here, brand new bracelet. Again, I'm not too bent out of shape about it, because, again, you know, this is more of a tool watch. I want the watch to be safe. The bracelet, the, especially the bottom clasp, is going to get scuffed up. But just don't force it. You know, don't be like, oh, I'm going to will it into place. I am man. Because, you know, if you go too far and then you run something, you know, already is this a frustrating situation where, you know, you want to go listen to a Mon Marth or Slipknot and, you know, flip your couch over in your front yard and burn it. Um, but if that happens and you go too far and do something you can't take back, then it's really not a fun night. So if you need to, take a breath, you know, have a drink, cold water, cold beverage, you know, what have you, and just come back to it, you know? That's gonna come out a lot better than if you're just like, you will submit to me, I am man. Stupid metal watch, raw. Ooh, baby. <laughs> oh, it's been too long. God dang. Mm. Ridiculous, ridiculous. There it is, and that's why it pays off. You have basically the um, a watch the weight of Thanos on your wrist. So. As you can see, Seiko right in the middle. This actually curves over like a link, so this would be your normal clasp. So that's like perfectly in the middle. Um, so again, just me taking a deep breath and going, okay, gonna do it right. Let me take it back off. Let me not do it while it's on the bracelet. So on and so forth. It ended up paying off perfectly. So that is the start to finish on how to adjust the bracelet. And then, like I mentioned, the dive clasp, the way that that would work in real life is if you were going out for a dive, you just take your nail, pull up under like this. It's kind of hard, but the thing is get it from both sides like that. Lift off, and then when you put it back on, it's now got this slack in it, which as you can see is quite a bit of ways to be able to fit over a dive suit. So that's a cool feature though on this bracelet that uh, really shows what it's made for. But yeah, yeah, that's it. And the cool thing is now that it's sized again, you can take it off so, so easy with just a pusher on both sides, boop, boop. Now I've got a strap. Now you put a water, rubber strap on, you know, so on and so forth, keep going and going and going, you know, once it's adjusted, you have it on there. So, gosh. Hmm. Well, anyways, not to bore you, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I super hope that it was helpful. It didn't go smooth as somebody who is a Polish professional, but I'm kind of glad it did. I'm not a polished professional. I'm an average guy, passionate about these products, and the things I do, and I'm glad that it ended up going that way so you can see that these sort of things happen and you know how to kind of overcome them. So if you did enjoy this video, I know me saying, but it really does help if you like and subscribe if you like this kind of content as we are getting closer to that 700 mark and my goal of hitting a thousand subscribers by the end of this year. So we're just a little bit over and you know, we're about seven, eight, day, you know, months into the year, and we're close to that 700 mark. So I really believe that the channel can go ahead and take off. Of course, I'd love to see your comments. Anything you have in the bottom, love you going going back and forth with you guys about any sort of questions that you have. Of course, most importantly, I appreciate you taking time out of your day to watch this video when there's so so many other great content creators that you could be watching right now. I really appreciate it. Of course, I hope everybody has a great rest of your week. Also, hope you guys, if you can, wish me luck. I have an interview coming up for a job that I've um, I've been really wanting for a long time, and I've been really in the position for a long time that I'm at. And uh, 
you know, I think it's about that time to start moving in another direction, a good direction. So if you guys could send me a little bit of luck my way too, or good, good, you know, will, I would really appreciate it. Of course, either way, hope everybody has an amazing rest of your night. Take care and be safe. Peace.